Hello, today we are talking about air filtration. To do that, I am joined by Dave Heritage, VP of Sales at Filtration Group. With almost 25 years in the industry, Dave can offer some expertise on the topic. Dave, thanks for talking today. Thanks, Kurt. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, Dave, let's set the scene here. When I say that we're talking about air filtration, people probably think of a wide range of things. Your area of specialty is indoor air quality. So what do you consider the definition to be for air filtration? So with air filtration, we're essentially trying to remove a contaminant from the air. So typically that's a particulate uh, such as dust. Uh, In some cases, it can also be a a gaseous uh, situation like a a VOC or volatile or organic compound, things like odors. Uh, But typically we're talking about particulate dust particles and things such as that. Excellent. Now let's offer a little more context to the link between Fastenal and the filtration group. Profitter, I like your shirt, by the way. Who and what is Profitter? So Profitter is a private brand or exclusive brand that uh, is owned by Fastenal. We are the manufacturer uh, of the HVAC air filters under the Profitter name. So the Profitter name has lots of different products uh, in the the family of Profitter products. We happen to make all of the Profitter branded HVAC filters here at our plants uh, in the U.S. A lot of uh, facilities recently improved part or all of their system. So let's say I'm one of those uh, companies, one of those organizations, and I just upgraded my system or my filters. Can you offer advice on what steps come next? What should I be looking for specifically? What do I be? What should I be thinking about right now? Yep, sure, sure. So with the uh, the the tension that COVID and the the pandemic brought to filtration, a lot of uh, facilities upgraded to higher MERV ratings. MERV stands for Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value. So be- basically, better air filters. So. When you upgrade to better air filters, that can have an impact on a system. HVAC systems are kind of dynamic. You make a change in one area, it's going to have an impact somewhere else in the the situation. That can, you know, kind of uh, become a a situation where you can have either shorter service life of the filter. It gets clogged easier because it's capturing a different size dust particle or more dust particles. Um, It could be that your your budgets are impacted by that. It could be, um, you know, various other things that that can influence the the equipment. So your your unit might not be operating as well as it did before. So all of those things have to come into consideration. And we want to make sure that your uh, those changes that you made uh, to address the COVID concerns are now being thought of in a more long term strategic manner as to how you're going to operate your system. I personally had never thought of the fact that the HVAC system as a whole has that whole interdependency to it. That's very interesting. Correct. Yeah, it, they're definitely dynamic. You make a change one place, it's going to make a, an impact somewhere else. So. Gotcha. So wildfire smoke, uh, it's become a yearly part of our lives. How can people deal with the odors and smoke? And is there a way that they can keep their team working in quality air? Sure. So uh, much like uh, COVID and, and the pandemic, there's the, the other much more real and, 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 you know, kind of acute situation of wildfire smoke. When you have wildfire smoke, which used to be, you know, kind of limited to the foresty areas in the, the West where they were having the fires. Now they've, in many cases, you know, transferred and they've, they're realizing that that has an impact nationwide in some cases. Um, that uh, manifests itself in a couple different ways. One is the way that you can see it, right? Smoke is visible typically. And those are particles. Those are large particles in the air, relatively large based on what we're used to to looking at in filtration. So those that you can see, uh, we're gonna try and remove those with filtration. And you do that just like you do dust or anything else. So higher levels of filtration will do a better job at removing those those visible dust particles. Um, But the the, the real devil's in the, the details you can't see, right? So there are, um, you know, there are gases that are, are products of that combustion that are happening, along with very fine particles that are way smaller than what you can see with your naked eye that are in the air just because of this uh, wildfire that's happened. So those have to be captured in different ways. They can be captured with very efficient air filters like HEPA filters and things along those lines, or with uh, things like carbon filtration that take out odors out of the air. So it's a combination of, of, uh, of issues essentially that you're trying to remove. But the biggest thing with wildfire smoke is that it typically is a short-term event. And when that event is over, much like if you were to go into a smoky environment and then your clothes smell like, you know, everyone's been by a campfire and then the next morning you smell your sweater and it smells like campfire. Well, those filters do the same things, right? So as the filters capture that smoke particle, it's going to smell like smoke. And if you leave that dirty filter in your unit, it will continue to to basically, you know, add smoke smell into your, your indoor space. So... That's one of the biggest things is use the best filter you can and then change it as soon as the smoke event is over. 
And I've seen ventilation and cognitive ability linked recently. Uh, I believe I'm summing this up well, but correct me where I go astray. Basically, indoor air quality can make people more productive. How can an organization tap into that moving forward? Yeah, sure. So, so indoor air quality um, has kind of gone through a life cycle. Originally, it was very much tied to uh, safety, right? So the idea of um, you know, you know, coal smoke and things like that, black lung disease, those types of, of safety type issues um, and equipment protection, trying to keep basic equipment uh, you know, clean. Then it became uh, about health. So people started realizing, OK, in like a hospital or in def- different environments, um, cleaner air can keep you healthier. Now we're going to the next step, which is more productive. So that productivity um, tied to indoor air quality, it's not just about filtration. It's also about CO2 levels and other things that are in the air that, that can cause uh, your own uh, body to react differently to the indoor environment that it's in. So, you know, our, as humans, you know, if you think about the history of the, the human race, um, we've spent a very small amount of that time indoors, essentially. Most of it has been, you know, your body is optimized to be outdoors where there's plenty of, you know, at least, um, you know, it's not a contained space for air. So as we now are in these very tight energy efficient spaces, how that impacts your body is being studied. And we're realizing that the better the indoor air quality that you have, um, not only is it healthier and safer, but it's also going to make you more productive. So um, that's a, a relatively new area of study. Again, all the studies that are going on because of the pandemic are also leading to a lot of that information as well, because that that actually helps you fund some of the ideas. Uh, it gives you a return on investment on things other than just a safety you know, precaution, which is harder to do an ROI on. You can do an ROI when you realize that people are actually more productive and able to produce more when they're in a, a, a cleaner environment. Right. That makes sense. So how can Profitter help a business or an organization? So we partner with Fastenal to bring solutions to the customer. So we try to understand the needs, um, the goals and, and needs, and then uh, bring the best product solutions uh, you know, to, to bear in that way. So we have field resources. We've got inside resources. We do a lot of virtual meetings these days where we essentially just engage with the customer or the, the facility manager and try and understand what they're trying to achieve. And then we make recommendations based on, you know, the I think we have over 3,000 Profitter air filters in the, the fast small offering today. So there's lots of different solutions. In many cases, there's kind of a good, better, best or different uh, ways that you can, you know, accomplish what you're trying to, you know, trying to accomplish and try and match that up best to the budget um, and the other needs that your, your customers have. Hearing you talk about how humans have only been in the space, in indoor spaces rather, for a relatively small period of time, what are we asking of our current systems? Are they capable of taking care of indoor air quality? Yeah, so if you take it even uh, beyond that, so air conditioning is really a, a relatively modern science, right? So it didn't really exist until after World War II was when it really became popular. And in many parts of the world, it's still not very popular or not very prevalent. So that idea of taking an indoor space with, uh, you know, an HVAC system that was designed really just to do temperature control originally, and now we're trying to make it infection control or productivity based where it's getting, you know, indoor air quality at maximum levels. They, in many cases, they weren't designed to do that. So the rule of thumb is typically the older your unit, the less likely it is that it was designed to manage indoor air quality. It was really just, man, you know, managing temperature and humidity at that point. So modern units now are all being engineered to incorporate that. And there's new regulations in California, like Title 24, that requires them to have, um, you know, outdoor air brought in as a a, a dedicated system. So that is changing over time. And so modern units typically will have an indoor air quality component to it as it was engineered. But the older units definitely won't. So that's a, a big problem that we deal with is people are dealing with legacy, you know, aged equipment and they're trying to get it to, to do things that it just was never designed to do. And in those cases, we'll recommend that you use and you augment your systems with a dedicated system. And that can be something as simple as a portable air scrubber. Um, you know, in some cases, it's uh, separate ventilation where you're, you're making up outside air and it's a totally separate system than what you have because there's no reason to replace these systems. You can augment them with additional systems in many cases. So we're talking about indoor air quality. We know that better air equals better performance. So if they can only focus on one thing, what should an organization focus on first? You should have a plan. So the first thing to do is is have a plan about indoor air quality because traditionally most places don't, right? They just only have um, their basic systems and they're maintaining them, but they don't think about it from an indoor air quality perspective. And so having a baseline, understanding where you're at today 
and where you want to go and how you're going to get there is all part of that plan. So that's what I would recommend um, to any of your customers or any facility manager I talk to is saying, you know, if you don't know where you're at, it's really hard to know where you're going to be going. And today there's the air quality monitors. There's all sorts of equipment that can absolutely help you understand that. And then now you can come up with a plan as to what solutions you can incorporate to get you to those goals. And in some cases, they're short term. Easy enough is pulling out one air filter and putting in another one. Other times, they're much more long term strategic and the idea of replacing equipment or upgrading equipment and doing those types of more complex um, upgrades. Well, I have one last curveball for you here. Uh, Is there a sustainability component to air filtration? Is that something that you guys are working on? Absolutely. So these are consumable items. Almost all of our air filters are consumed. So they end up in landfills. So uh, that's one of the the natures of our, our product. And so you can imagine that when you have a product that's going to end up being disposed of when it does its job, you can you know try to to adjust those parameters and uh, you know improve the sustainability of it. So one thing is to get longer service life. In many cases, a premium air filter will last significantly longer. So if I have a filter that lasts six months versus one that lasts three months, I'm literally putting half as many of those filters into the landfill each year. In addition, air filters uh, create resistance, and resistance has to be overcome by mechanical equipment that uses electricity. So uh, without getting too complex, essentially. You know, certain air filters are very restrictive and take a lot of energy. Other ones are much less restrictive and use a lot less energy. So there's some factors we get involved in there. So not only do we have sustainability factors, but we can often fund these improvements of your HVAC air filter systems by looking at the overall what we call total um, total life cycle cost, which would include the labor to change it, the disposal costs, and then the energy to operate it, along with, of course, the purchase price that everyone always recognizes. So, Well, Dave, I believe I've taken enough of your time. Thanks for talking today. Hey, no problem. I appreciate it and uh, have a good one. 